Hello and welcome to the grand finale of the Creature Tier List. Uh, we have a lot of very cool, awesome units to go over. But first off, let me build a little bit of credibility. I have played this game for thousands of matches in the online lobby. I have uh, had win streaks even against the best of players. I'm not like the best yet, but I'm pretty good. I know what I'm talking about. Um, and my tier list may come off uh, as inconsistent. That is kind of true. I let my biases run wild because this is my tier list, okay? If I hate a creature, then, you know, I'm just going to say it. And I'm going to dump it pretty lower than you might dump it yourself. Um, please do note, this is my tier list. It doesn't have to be your tier list. Um, your, uh, you know, preferences might be different. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. First up is we have the Azer Dragon, the base unit of the game, okay? This guy has 1000 HP, insane ludicrous stats at 75-75 attack and defense, and best is their utility. They provide you with a spell, well not a spell, but rather an effect that makes the opponents lose 20% of their turns. It is the fear ability, it is very potent, very powerful. An extra layer of crowd control to the opponent. And for those reasons, they are the king of all creatures in the Esther they go. Well deserved, really. Next up is the Behemoth. I really like Behemoth. They have a pretty simple build path. They're pretty cheap, but they're honestly not that great of a unit. <clears throat> Being a slow TX unit makes them a little bit clunky. They are also not that tanky, and they don't deal that much damage. They are unexceptional, but pretty widely available and they're pretty well fit for the for I mean stronghold faction since they don't really have that tanky of a unit and behemoth kind of takes that role despite not being that tanky but for stronghold standards they are decently tanky I would put them at B tier I no actually C tier sorry next up is the ancient behemoth and if you were to upgrade your behemoths then you have a monster unit 300 HP ignores almost all defense skill of the defending creature <clears throat> at 80%. And that is absolutely wonderful. Really powerful creature. Um, these guys are almost good at anything that they do. They're good at tanking. They're good at attacking. They're really good as like a one stack to get you going. You know, if you could get one early. They're really, really great as a power stack in the late game. I feel like these creatures are one of the best creatures in the game what a worthwhile upgrade and also they're not even that expensive to get how wonderful is that amazing there they go uh, next up is the red dragon uh red dragons are not very exceptional in terms of their stats 180 hp pretty average damage for a tier 7 creature and of course they have the breath as a dragon uh what makes them really really good is the fact that they are in the dungeon faction the fact that you're in the dungeon faction <clears throat> makes them very good early game because one they use it to take using the fake breath and any attack to zero two they can be portaled uh making them very very relevant despite not being able to build the actual dragon cave in the dungeon easily at all um with this they're a really really good unit that can get you snowballing they get you going very very well they are a solid B tier unit, in my opinion. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next up is the Black Dragon. And the Black Dragon is good for numerous reasons, okay? It is one of the best units for the sake of Dragon Geddon. Um, my favorite reason they're good is the fact that they are beautiful, okay? Now, these creatures are one of the most beautiful beings in the entire game of Heroes of Mountain Magic 3. In my opinion, they well deserve an A tier list despite not being represented that well. They are super, super good whenever you do get them, which is rare and it's such a big shame for such a royal and a fun to use unit. But there they go. Recently, I did have some Black Dragon games, which are pretty rare, but whenever I do go for them, I usually don't win. <laughs> but I, I'm not disappointed anyway, okay? Uh, most of my losses with these guys came down to my own, mm, you know, bad plays, I guess. Next up is we have the Hydra, okay? Now, this unit was not meant for battle. 
these guys are reasonably slow moving. They can't really get to enemies easily at all. They have pretty cool abilities, by the way. They have the AoE attack as a Hydra, and they also have no enemy retaliation. Pretty good. Those are really strong abilities. But when your unit doesn't deal damage, can't really attack, he can't even tank for you because you get ignored because the AI doesn't actually get a wee hit that much, you know, because they don't, like, flock around the unit unless they have, like, nothing else to do. But usually they have some other things to do, so they go for that. <clears throat> so, yeah, they're not very good at tanking. They're not very good at doing damage. Their utility is kind of wasted on these units. They have, uh, notably, a pretty good build pad. They're not that expensive. But despite this, they are a pretty garbage unit. Very hard to use. Um, almost uncomparable to any other tier 7 unit. And if you were to upgrade them for whatever reason, they become like a little bit less clunky. Speed 7 for a t upgraded tier 7 unit is really low. Well, as low as it gets, naturally. Um, still, they're pretty good at doing tops. They can be like a solo commando unit for your hives. You know, they can solo them pretty easily. It does have its uses, but like compared to anything else on this list, they are... Pretty bad. I would put them C tier. They are not much more worth than a behemoth, despite being way less accessible than a behemoth. At least in my opinion. I mean, they're way better than behemoth than brawling, yes, but... Not good enough to make up their cost. Ooh, actually, still this. Uh, next up is the Crystal Dragon. Uh, these guys are not very good. They have the magic immunity, but they don't breath despite being a dragon. Uh, thematically, they're not really cool. Just red guys running at you. I don't know. This unit uh, kind of falls flat, in my opinion. Whenever you get a crystal cavern dwelling, they are ludicrously expensive to buy. Like, not worth it. Not worth your cash. You're not really happy to see it in the box. They're not menacing out in the field. I feel like crystal dragons just kind of suck. No, really, that's all there is to it. They just kind of suck. I would actually even put them in D tier. Considering their cost, considering their AI value, they are certainly not worth it. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> I feel like these guys are really, really bad. Next up is we have the Devil. Uh, Devil is a real cool unit, by the way. They have the special abilities of minus luck to the opponents, as well as no enemy retaliation. And the fact... When you bundle no enemy retaliation with a speedy unit, you get a monster combo. This means that you can kite many of the creatures without actually taking any damage. So the moment that you get a devil, any single um any single dwarven treasury, churchyard, and many of the objects and slower creature fights become free for you. They're really good at kiting. Um yeah, solid units. They are pretty expensive i would say they're more expensive than what they're worth if you were to build them uh but if you build them you're usually not disappointed uh these units do provide in utility in power they're pretty good i would put them at b tier there we go but if you were to upgrade to arch devil <clears throat> then you get one of the edgiest units in the game now being edgy will not put you at the top of the list uh, by itself but the arch devil is actually really cool um, they basically can go throughout the entirety of the map with their speed. Um, they give you still minus luck, which is really good. Um, it's like an extra layer of defense, basically, for your army. Um, definitely not to be underestimated. Whenever you fight this out in the field, you can really feel that minus luck. You're like, okay, my unit is killing two devils, I'm just gonna go and kill them. And then you minus luck, then they read out towards you, then you lost your unit, then you're like, oh no, what am I gonna do now? Um, these guys can be a really massive pain, and they're also, like, really fun to use, and they're really, really cool. I wouldn't put them that high, and, like, at the top at least, but I think they're a solid 8 there. Cool units. Rivals to De angels, by the way, so they deal 50% extra damage to those, which is pretty relevant, because angels are almost always present. So, yeah, this comes at the cost of being, taking 50% more damage against doubles, but, um, yeah. I would still say it as uh, it is an upside for the player. Next up is the Fairy Dragon. Now, this guy... In Shadow of Death, they would be quite better because their AI value there is way lower, meaning that they have to be 
less good in order to meet the standard for their AI value. But in the Horn of the Abyss, on the other hand, there's going to be only a few of these guys wherever you encounter them. And taking care of a few... Uh, taking care of a few fairy dragons worth of AI value of a fight is actually really easy. You basically pay a tax when you pay these creatures. They usually move first and they usually like shoot you uh, a few times at a spell. But after that happens, they become completely useless. They're really, really squishy, com you know, for being exotic dragons. Um, they are not really worth buying for the player because you don't scale off of your stats. Um, I really don't like these, okay? They're not powerful. They're pretty easy to handle. They are definitely not worth their expense. And uh, they don't scale. They're bad. I would actually put them even below the Crystal Dragon. Um, you know, I donate all the... Um, all the exotic dragons, you know, is a dragon that's at the top, but like these two guys are pretty redeemable. They don't really have anything going the way. Next up is we have the Firebird. The Firebird is a really cheap unit, and that does matter. Um, you're really happy to see one in a mercenary camp, and uh, from your red tower, um, maybe from a dwelling to you. You don't really build them in a complex town, they're not often worth it. Uh, but you know, these guys are one of the best utility. For tier 7 unit, unupgraded tier 7 unit. <clears throat> um, by the way, notably, they are 50% immune to fire magic in Horn of the Abyss. Not fully immune, meaning that they are not an Armageddon activator. So in Shadow of Death, they would be a lot higher, but we're doing a horror tier list. So they are not as high as they previously would have been. So because of that, they, I think, belong in B tier. They do very similar things to Devil. I feel like they do some of the things better, but, um, I mean, Devils do a little bit, a bit of things better. So, there they go. I would say they are pretty solid beat there. Next up is the Phoenix! The fastest unit in the game. How cool are they? They have, um, a really cool fiery animation. They rebirth upon death, making them a hassle to take care of. You know, you have your Phoenixes, and then... You basically secure yourself the first cast every single new round. And if they even were to kill it, you would probably resurrect anyway and still keep up your first casting. Uh, pretty cool. Super good utility. And they are the best Armageddon activator in the game. Super speed and fire immunity is all you need for an armor bomb. And these guys do it perfectly. Really cool. I love these guys. So the chickens of my list would be getting... Um... A tier, pretty cool. Uh, these two guys can do the same thing, but they also have like a lot of uh, different utility as well. So, yeah, I'll still put these to the above. Next up is the Bone Dragon. Now, I would think that many of you would actually expect the Bone Dragon to be bottom, maybe a below Hydra even. And yes, these guys suck. They have like no stats whatsoever. They're pretty abysmal you don't usually build them um whenever you see them they usually come from like a single dwelling but let me tell you let me tell you these guys uh they have well a few things going for them first of all in the early game of necropolis a necro, necro doesn't have any fast units to make their heroes faster so these guys make up that uh, disadvantage by giving you a speed nine unit to make your main at least a little bit faster that's cool it's actually useful um then second is they preserve your skeletons throughout every single fight that you take as a big healthy unit um 150 hp is not like tremendous but when it comes to taking like um ocean fights archer fights you know many fights back to back to back um that necro does like to take it really does add up the value of the bone dragon and most importantly they have minus morale so they prevent opponents from rallying on top of your skelly stack as well, making you far more consistent. So a single one of these guys is going to make your necro game faster, um, more consistent. They're going to let you generate more skellies because you bleed less. Uh, so having one of them is really, really good. But then the second and third are actually completely useless. <laughs> I mean, not completely useless, but um, not good. Uh, they are not a battle unit, they are a utility unit. Um, and as a utility unit, they're pretty okay. But being only utility and only situational, mostly Necropolis, I would say they put our Etsy there. I was fail I am the reason I was explaining all of this is uh, to justify them not being D there, at least in my opinion. 
And the Ghost Dragon does everything that the Bone Dragon does, of course, and it also has the Aging Ability. Aging Ability, by the way, 20% chance to half a unit HP. So, you know, they would hit um, Ancient Behemoth, and then suddenly they would go from 300 HP to 150! Halving their entire HP pool! That is an insane effect, one of the strongest effects in the game! Uh, but you know, it's 20%, it's inconsistent, it's gated behind a really, really bad unit. These guys don't really have any stats, they're not that hard to take. But whenever you do fight them, you always run into the threat of being aged. And that is really scary. And, and you know, they're still good utility, they're fast, they, they, can, they can do things for you. You're not too sad to see these guys. Mm, B tier, in my opinion. Low B tier. Um, next up is the Giant. Stat-wise, these guys are nothing special. Well, actually, they kind of are. They are a glass cannon. They deal 40 to 60 damage as an unupgraded tier 7 unit. That's, that's a lot of damage. They're also notoriously pretty good with Bless, unlike most of the other tier 7 creatures. Mm, Behemoth for Hydra is also kind of good, but um, I would say the Giant, because of their already high damage, actually is uh, one of the best things to Bless. So, yeah. Um, they do really, really good damage, making them a pretty decent power stack, but nothing that you want to use a as a, a real power stack, to be honest. Um, they're pretty squishy for tier 7, and they're not that fast either. Usually you get them from experimental workshops and use them as me, you know. You go into a tope and giants are the units that get focused. And, you know, you're not too sad about that. The other units survive, you get the tope and you're pretty good to go. They're also pretty cheap to buy. Cloud Temple is the cheapest tier 7 dwelling in the game. Um, they, it only costs 5,000 gold to buy. That's like nothing, okay? Usually you buy even a few of these guys just because they're that cheap to get. And, you know... They have pretty good usability, they have good damage. Mm, I would put them top of seat there. There they go. And if you were to upgrade them, you would get the Titans, aka Gym Lords. I like that name. Um, Retail Sex used it first, um, as I heard it. Um, yeah, so the Gym Lords are really, really good. Uh, they are really expensive, but they're worth it. They are. I would say about tied for the best shooters in the game alongside Cyclops. Cyclops are much more available and are far more relevant um, than Titans. But when Titans are in the game, then holy damn, are you scared? Uh, it's really, really hard to deal with these guys. Due to their HP pool, they are not magic down that easily. Um, they can't really be melee because they have no melee penalty. Uh, these guys have like no weaknesses and they're really, really good at whatever they do. Whether it's being meleeing dragons in the Utopia, whether it's being your ranged power stack, um, and they're good at all across the board. Um, recently, because of the addition of lamps in Jeebus Cross, you don't really see these guys anymore. Because almost no template is rich enough to actually warrant upgrading the titans manually. Um, so you don't see them almost as much anymore. You did see them like back in the days before the lands for Jeebus Cross since they, the gold of the tower player wasn't synced into those. Uh, these days are they are not as relevant but still really really cool whenever they do happen. Um, solid super stack in the late game. 8 tier in my opinion. Mm, next up is the green dragon. Now green dragon in my opinion is the worst dragon. 160 HP. That's basically nothing. Well, not nothing. I mean, many of the D7 units have uh, a similar HP. But they feel really squishy. They don't feel like they do a lot of damage. They have one purpose, and that's to get Rampart going in the early game. The way you take this dwelling is you bait them in with a 2-hex unit. They attack immediately, and then you root them in place in the dwelling. And then you just shoot them to death with your um, Grand Elves, of course. And whenever you get like a dragon early, it's always going to be useful. For taking your pickets, for kiting creatures, for tanking for you a little bit without dying. Um, you know, they accomplish the basic tier 7 unit functions, but um, quite a bit worse than most of the other available ones. Also, their build path is super, super bad. Uh, yeah, they're not that good in my opinion. 
I would actually put them at D there. Next up is the Gold Dragon. The Gold Dragon is the fastest of the non-exotic dragons, even outspeeding the Black Dragon. We also have higher stats than the Black Dragon, but um, it's compensated by the fact that they have 50 less HP. And that does matter. These guys don't really make for a wonderful power stack. They don't make for like insane utility either, because they're not as magic immune as the Black Dragon, of course. They're kind of like in between everywhere, but not really specializing in anything, uh, making them pretty hard to use, um, and also pretty unrewarding to actually build and invest steel. I really like them in terms of aesthetics. The gold dragon, in my opinion, is really, really cool, but apart from coolness, they don't really do that much. So despite being an upgraded dragon, in my opinion, they are C tier. Next up is the coal units. The Sea Serpents. Now, Sea Serpents are really amazing and really nice. They have 180 HP, but they have um, a lot of damage, and they're also pretty cheap. Whenever you get them from a dwelling, you're really happy. They're going to be carrying you for your swamp uh, adventures. Um, pretty solid. You don't often build them because the build path is kind of awkward. You need the Mage Guild, you need Sorceresses, which you don't usually buy otherwise. Um... But they're okay. I mean, I would say they accomplish a very similar role to be humans, except they're harder to build. So I would still put them at C tier, but below. They're cool, and they're actually pretty usable, but not enough relevant. But if you are to upgrade the Haspids, these poisonous creatures have a very unique ability. The more you kill of them, the more damage that they do. It's uh, pretty hard to handle, because, you know... You kind of want to make them, you, you kind of want to kill them so there's not more of them hitting you. But if you do that, then they do more damage. Um, so yeah, the revenge ability is pretty hard to handle and very, very scary and menacing. They are one of the best brawling creatures in the game. They're also not like notorial, notoriously expensive, but still pretty expensive. For 300 HP unit with this much damage, it's usually worth it though, if you can actually build them. But they still don't really happen that often. They are pretty niche. Despite lacking them quite a bit, I cannot really get them a better ranking than B tier. In terms of brawling, they of course would kill everything in the B tier. And actually most of the things in A tier. But the fact that they are that expensive and um, don't offer much in utility. You see, most of the good tier 7 units are either so ridiculously strong and brawling and cheap and available or they have added extra utility and good effects for your entire gameplay meanwhile the haspids is not like exceptionally good at brawling and they, and they don't provide your army with any good utility either so because of that i don't feel like they belong in the very high tiers next up is the rust dragon uh this dragon is somewhat interesting they have the special ability of the Acid Breath. Acid Breath, every single time it procs, is going to be reducing your armor by a certain amount. Meaning that if you don't deal enough damage to them, they eventually will get your armor to zero. And that's really, really scary. When it comes to Crystal Dragons, someone like the Zillar can just tank them forever. They don't do any damage and you're eventually going to kill them. You cannot do that with uh, Rust Dragons. They are way scarier in this regard. They also are actual dragons with an actual breath, so they're actually thematically way cooler than the crystal dragons do. Um, they do things. They're not good enough to, uh, where I would recommend you to actually buy one from a dwelling, or a merc camp even, if you were to find one. But they are good enough that you're actually scared of these guys out in the fields, and um, yeah, they're pretty decent units. Thematically cool as well, the rest dragons spend an acid on your army. Nice. I would put them solidly in the C tier. And last, we have the Angel. These guys are wonderful. They are the most cost efficient unit in, the, uh, in your armies, okay? You can get them out of conservatories, you can build them in a portal of glory, farm them from dwellings, and uh, they're gonna provide you with so much utility. They give you plus one morale, so you can have these guys without any morale penalty, basically. And if you add, like, other castle army after that point, then you're actually getting extra morale. Really, really good. 
Um, they have 200 HP, they're really, really fast, their stats are good, and they have a base amount of damage, meaning that they don't have a range, meaning that they're going to be doing the same amount of damage every single time, making them very easy to use consistently and well. These guys are one of my favorite creatures in the game. Um, they look really cool. The sound that they make when they slice things with, the, with this uh, lightsaber is also really cool. I play these, I mean, in my thousands of games, I had these guys almost every single game, and their sound effect of their attack still does not get boring, even after all this time. They are one of the best units in the game, both uh, in terms of almost everything. And you also have, of course, the best upgrade. So, you might be thinking, hey, Lekshav, you forgot a unit. Where is my Archdevil? Uh, I mean, Archangel. And, um, one moment, I will show you. The Archangel, from the very beginning to the very end, has been watching, uh, has been watching down upon all of us from the heavens above. Praise Archangel, okay? They are in a league of their own. They are the best unit in the game. Insane stats, great availability. Um, resurrection ability, they are the most menacing pass tag, the most, uh, the greatest of utilities. They are wonderful, Praise Archangel, in a league of their own. So, thanks for watching, guys. Um, hope this one will not cause as much controversy, <laughs> but it probably will, you know, people love their units. And you know what, I understand you guys. Your units are meant to be, you know, stood up for as well. So, you know, feel free to do so in the comments. Tell me why my list sucks and your one is way more correct. I'll be seeing you in the comments below. Till the next one. Bye bye. Hope you enjoyed the unit tier list saga.